Let's do part two of day three, binary diagnostics. This is kind of complicated. It took me a while to do, about an hour maybe to do part two. To really understand this, you probably should read all this before we continue so we don't do it together. Let's explore this code by running it in the debugger. We'll stop right here when we create a rating finder for the for the oxygen generator rating. There are two ratings we need to find, oxygen generator and CO2 scrubber. And the oxygen generator rating uses the most common value in the current bit position and the CO2 scrubber rating uses the least common value. So we create two of these rating finders, one using the most common and one using the least common. Let's go in and look at how this object gets constructed. Um, self nums gets list of nums, so let's execute that and now we can look at self nums and we have the test data numbers, the 12 numbers in here the uh, same numbers you see here. And we record the fact that most common is true. So this is the this is the rating finder for the oxygen generator. And then we don't have a result yet, so we set this to none. And then we return to here. Now we make the the other rating finder. And this works about the same, except here the most common is false. And then we create a list of the two rating finders so we can loop over them. And then the instructions say start with all 12 numbers and consider only the first bit and then the next bit and the next bit and so on. So let's see. We have a loop that has the variable bit index that goes from 0 to 1 less than the number of columns. So with this test data it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for each bit we call a function on each finder. We call the we see if the finder has a result yet and it doesn't. So now we call discard non matches for bit index. Bit index is 0. Remember it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so let's go now into the discard none matches. Here we are, and here's the comment. This first finds the most or least common digit at the bit index. So if you go through here, there are more ones than zeros in this first column. So this digit to match is going to be a one. And now we, with the list comprehension, we discard or keep only those numbers whose first digit contains a 1. So now watch self nums shrink when we do this. There, we used to have 12, now we have 7. So we removed all the numbers that don't have a 1 in, in bit position 0. Uh, then we check and see if we're if we're done. We know we're done when there's only one number left, and we're not done now, so we don't do that. And now for the other finder, we run discard non matches, and this time the digit to match is zero because uh, for the the other finder we're interested in the least common number, so there are fewer zeros than ones. So now for this, we're going to be discarding everything that doesn't have a zero in the first column. So watch these. And there it goes. And all that remains is numbers with a zero in the first column. So just keep in mind, we've got two of these rating finders going, one for each of the two ratings, oxygen generator and CO2 scrubber. We just take a single pass through all the bits in the data and we compute both values 
using two different rating finders. Okay, now I think we'll set a breakpoint when. No, well, actually, let's just let's just run a bit more. Um, So we've taken we've we're done with bit index zero. Now we go to the next bit. Bit index is now one. And we don't have a result yet, so we call discard non-matches. Here the digit to match for this first rating finder uh, is gonna be one, two, three, four. Well, there are only four ones, so the, the digit that they're most of is zero. So digit to match is gonna be zero. And there it is. And now for the for bit position uh, index one, zero one, we're going to throw away or we're going to keep the ones who's that have a uh, digit to match here. Digit to match is zero. So here we go. And now we only kept the ones that have a zero in the second position. So you see this process. We loop over these lists, keep shrinking. Eventually, we'll get to here. So let's put a breakpoint here and uh, run to the next breakpoint. And now you see that for this uh, rating finder, we only have one number left. And this is the result. So we're going to take this number, which is, it's a string containing numbers, zeros and ones. So if we turn that into an integer using base two, then we'll decode this as a binary number. And so uh, it's going to be one, two, four, eight. Uh, it's going to be a 10, I think. So that uh, result for this current finder should be a 10. There it is. All right, so eventually we break out of this loop because it's true that for all finders we have a result. So let's see when that happens. There, and now we continue. And now we have the, the um, two results and we multiply them together and that gives us the answer that we're looking for. And for the test data, um, part one, the answer is 198. Part two, the answer is 230. Let's just check. We, we computed a 23 and a 10. We multiply them together and we get 230. Sometimes I go through and point out the interesting bits. Um, and also, maybe there's some parts I didn't uh, talk about that are new. Um, this B01 function, it takes some kind of truthy value, like a Boolean or an integer um, or a string containing an integer, and it turns it into the string 0 or 1. And the input can be a Boolean or an int or a string containing um, a number. And so what do we do? Um, well, if it's, if it's a string, then we call int on it to turn it into an integer, and then we call bool on that to turn it into a boolean, and then we have a boolean value. If it's not a string, then it's going to be a bool or an int, and then we just pass it to bool, and now we definitely have a boolean value. And then we have the ability to, to reverse this so that you would get a a zero for true and a one for false. So um, if the reverse keyword parameter is true, um, then we reverse it using a not, uh, giving us this maybe reverse value. We take that maybe reverse value, which is a Boolean, turn it into an integer, which makes it a zero or one integer, and then we turn that into a string, which makes it a zero or one character inside a string. And let's see, there are more ones than zeros for a given bit position and a sequence of numbers. It sums up all the values at that position, and that's the number of one bits. 
and then the number of zero bits it computes by just seeing how many bits are, are remaining. And then it returns a Boolean of whether or not the number of one bits is more than the number of zero bits. I made some changes to part one that I won't talk about now. You can study them on your own. And uh, I think that's it. Hope you're enjoying these advent of code problems as much as I am. Students, come see me for private lessons. See you next time.